Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Sullivan, and I'm the curator at Caldor Public Art Projects. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the country from the many places we find ourselves this evening. For me, it's the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation. I recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture and pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I'm really uh, excited to be shining a spotlight on Caldor Public Art Project's education programs as we officially launched the Do It Homework eBook. So we're really taking this opportunity to reflect on the creative learning program, share experiences, challenges, surprises uh, in delivering this 10 week program simultaneously in schools, but obviously in this new context online. Um, so by way of a really brief background, Do It Homework was created to sit alongside our major artistic program for the year, Do It Australia, which was launched in May. And it was our first ever digital art project, public digital, uh, digital public art project. And it really sprung from those first few months of disruption and uncertainty. So the project saw 18 Australian artists, one of them who joined us here this evening, Dale Harding, um, and creative practitioners create really simple sets of instructions that would generate an artwork. And those instructions were subsequently shared online as were the many responses from, from audiences. Now, Do It Homework was a targeted 10 week creative learning program for secondary students with newly commissioned instructions for students by artists, Lauren Brinkat, Dale Harding and Amrita Happy. And we're gonna dive into the detail about how the program connected these artists with students, with teachers in their own places of learning. And it's really wonderful to have some of those participants uh, join us this evening. So first of all, uh, Dale Harding, who is an artist who participated in the program, the 10 week program. Uh, I'm not gonna read biographies, um, but I guess Dale, with your practice, it's really important to um, mention that your work is really informed by and extends upon um, the cultural forms and practices of your heritage. So the Bidjara, Garingbul and Galangu peoples. And this is done across a range of mediums. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to hear from you shortly. We're also joined by teacher Heather Davidson, uh, who participated with her students from Macquarie Fields High School. And it's really great to have the teacher's perspective here this evening. So we're looking forward to, um, to your insights a little bit later, Heather. And of course, the Cal Calder Public Art Project education team uh, led by Antonia Fredman and uh, together with Leah Smith. Now, the missing piece of the puzzle here is the students. And um, I'm gonna show a little video, I'm gonna share my screen here from students from the, um, just lost my video, where is that gone? From Macquarie Fields High School. Let me come back again. There we go. And we're gonna hear some comments and um, yeah, takeaways from their time participating in the program. Uh, hi, I'm Mira. And I'm Rex Street, and we're from Fairfields High School. I expected the Do It homework to be um, about painting and drawing and stuff, and just the things like this. I was imagining that it would just be like extracurricular art, um, like just painting and drawing, stuff like that, but it turned out to be like really different and unique art styles. And projects. I didn't really think art would be um, the things that we saw in the Do It Homework. I just thought art would be um, uh, dancing and painting and uh, sculpting stuff. But the but then um, the Do It uh, Homework it really just like it just uh, showed us that art could be much more than that. Yeah, it really changed my perspective on what you can do for art and the limits of art. What I got from it is uh, the audience plays a big part in perspective so they can see your artwork from many point of views so you could create something that, that they would understand and see something completely different so you could kind of play with that when doing the artworks for the do it homework. Instructions were really interesting like the uh, and unique for example the one where you chop the cucumber and and then put it on your forehead and someone else um, else's forehead. And that was uh, really yeah, same with that. It was just very different. <laughs> Trying to interpret what the artist meant when um, writing the instructions. 
Yeah, and just finding time to, like, I had time to do the actual homework, but I didn't have time to record what I did. So just time management was a little bit of an issue. I think doing the um, piece of instruction from other people, from other schools, and making our own instructions as well. We didn't have a lot of things to do during um, online schooling and being at home, which is when the Caldor Arts Project took place. Um, so we having the Caldor Arts Project there to kind of have something else to do was very fun and entertaining just to have like extra stuff to do on top of just homework online. Well, Antonia and Leah, I'm going to start with you both. I'm sure you have some um, comments to pick up from on the video, but it would also be really great to hear um, a bit of an overview of the Do It Homework program. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, am I in speak of you? Um, yeah, no. that's all right. Sorry, I might have to switch to gallery view. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, obviously a lot to pick up from the, it's so lovely to hear from the students from Macquarie Fields and a few comments I could pick up on, but there was just one little thing that Astrid said about the program giving her something to do, which I think in any other context, we would think, well, that's such a small thing, but I think it really speaks to, you know, the nature of this moment that we found ourselves in and that, you know, the program was really born out of this quite pressing need for active engagement for students as much as teachers, teachers and artists. Um, during a time of great uncertainty. So just to set a little bit of context before Leah dives into the, the detail of how the program was actually delivered. Um, as Emily said, Do It Homework was developed alongside the 36th Caldor Public Art Project, um, our first digital art project. Um, but Do It itself has been something that's been around since 1993, it was initiated by the Swiss curator Hans Ulrich Obrist. Um, it's since been had I think iterations in over 50 countries worldwide so the premise of do it is is actually quite simple it's a, an instruction that is written by an artist that can be interpreted by anyone anywhere so it's this beautifully sort of open-ended format and that in itself you know held the promise of being a really great sort of educational resource so while we were developing this program we knew you know this was a great way to introduce students to conceptual art practices for them to develop an understanding of process, for them to develop particularly an understanding of points. Um, it was equally important for us to push that a little bit further to think about how we could really encourage a, a deeper engagement um, because you know, we weren't dealing with instructions that just came out of a book. We had this array of 18 amazing artists who were creating instructions right now in response to the situation that was happening, you know, right now. So we just really wanted to find a way of being able to connect at least some of those artists with the schools that we were working with and find really direct connections and ways of, you know, addressing this sort of moment that we found ourselves in. Um, and another thing that was really important to us was to give the students an opportunity to write their own instructions. Um, which we knew from the outset was going to be a very challenging task because, task because students, as we know, their lives are very bound up in following rules rather than setting rules. But, um, you know, we felt like this was something we really wanted to commit to through the program and the way it was structured was really very much around those two sort of aims. But I'll let Leah elaborate on the detail. Yeah, thank you, Antonia. Um, so as Emily mentioned, Do It Homework was a 10 week creative learning program Targeting, targeting stage five students across New South Wales. And we were very fortunate to work with 200 or over 200 very enthusiastic young people um, from schools across the state. So we had um, participating students from Western Sydney, the inner city, as well as um, regional and remote communities. And that diversity was a real strength of the program. Um, the structure was quite, um, I guess, uh, thoughtful. <laughs> it had many various um, steps throughout and I'm just going to briefly touch on those so that you can in, that we can introduce to you um, you know how committed these students were and and I guess how considered this program itself was. So you know it's so delightful to have Heather with us today um, because the first step in this program was to meet with the teachers and to really um, set the scene in a way to gauge, you know, what they had hoped to get out of the program, how we could best support them, but equally to learn more about their classroom group, their community, and any learners that we could support um, greater 
throughout the, the Do It Homework program. Um, next, we created a series of digital learning resources, which were actually um, created alongside or set to be released alongside Do It Australia. And these resources really looked at conceptual and instruction-based art more broadly. They're, ab they're available for everyone, they're online, they're for free download, but this was a prompt for schools interested in participating in Do It Homework to kind of really kind of create that foundation and then to ground themselves in some of these ideas prior to jumping on board with us. Um, then we get to the exciting part. So Antonia and I were very fortunate to lead um, Zoom workshops with all participating schools. We led two of these um, and they each had a different driver. So Zoom workshop number one was really geared towards encouraging learners to reflect on what matters to them and, and what they care about. And Zoom workshop number two built upon some of those reflections, but invited students to collaborate and work together and to discuss with their peers where their interests may be intersected. Um, and this is a really important note because the students worked in small groups, which we termed artist collectives in the creation of these instructions. So being able to have difficult conversations and navigate that was really crucial to our program development. Um, again, we have the wonderful Dale Harding with us and he was one of our participating artists. Um, the next step in the program were these beautiful um, artist Q&A sessions, which sort of floated throughout the timeline. And I should also preface this by saying each artist worked very closely with two to three assigned schools um, in a more engaged way. However, it was really important to us that all students had the opportunity to connect with the diversity of practice and practitioners that we had in the Do It Homework program. So these Q&A sessions were an opportunity for students to you know, ask, how do you make your money and how do you survive as an artist, which was wonderful. Um, and finally, just to land, here we are celebrating our ebook launch. Um, so thank you for joining us. And uh, this is not only a documentation of this really rich and innovative creative learning program, but is also an opportunity for us to reflect on our key learnings and to share them more broadly and open up a conversation with you all. Thanks, Leah. Um, something, Antonio, you touched on is, you know, this program really being born from the situation. Um, it also really builds on a lot of the research that you both have done in, you know, with recent pro uh, programs and um, many of which have been student led and you're talking about you know, that kind of in depth process Leah, that you're talking to kind of already starts to speak to that. Um, something I picked up reading through the ebook, um, this really lovely idea where you talk about the value of programs where students uh, really see themselves as being quite centered already in the wider arts community, maybe as potential artists themselves and um, I'd love you to talk about how the structure, you know, really supported that way of thinking and, and why that's important for students when it comes to, you know, creative programs for that deal with the visual arts. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, you know, I think we're very fortunate to work for Calzor. We're a small, agile, responsive organisation. Um, and that was very fortunate in this current context to be able to pivot very quickly. So although Do It Homework was, you know, in essence, a COVID response program, it still was very much tied to our mission and key learnings from past educational programs. Um, you know, some of those ideas are, you know, about advocating or providing opportunities to support student agency, the development of um, student confidence, critical thinking skills, and also collaboration. These things are fundamental to us. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, Do It Homework was heavily informed by our former education program, Your Public Art Project 2019 which really put the learner up front and invited students to work collaboratively to develop innovative site-specific artworks born from their knowledge and relationship to their local environment and their local communities. Now, as Antonia mentioned, the do it you know, structure is pre-existing and it naturally lent itself very beautifully to you know, being quite open and, and flexible and adaptable to you know, work as a learning program. Um, I think it's really important to note that, you know, the do it structure intentionally blurs the lines between artist, artwork and audience. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, a very um, exciting thing to introduce students to, but equally quite challenging. Um, so, you know, through the act of just making together in the classroom and simply reimagining what that school, what the school site can be and how it can participate 
in these broader conversations within the arts community, these students, you know, actively inserted themselves into that global narrative um, as artists. And I use that term, you know, intentionally because it was not enough for us to just have students interpret or respond to pre-existing works by other artists. We wanted to give them space and autonomy to share what matters to them, what they care about, and to be able to distribute that more broadly, which this ebook really provides a wonderful platform to do. Um, I'll just make sort of one really last comment. Um, you know, again, bringing the artist directly into the classroom in direct contact with the learner was really significant um, in that it also broke apart this mythology that we often have about artists, that they work alone in their studio, um, you know, and they have this track of genius and they create this artwork. Um, and that it's perfect from the very beginning. And so- I can see, I can see Dale nodding there. <laughs> these artists are so generous in being very vulnerable and, and that authenticity and that honesty in that communication was, speaks volumes in any learning experience. Yeah, I think what, you know, one of the key things you're talking about there is this idea of community and starting to establish themselves as being part of that. Um, from the outset. Um, I guess, you know, a key intention for these programs was to really start to see how we could help facilitate a sense of community in, in light of social distancing, in light of self-isolation and the really big shift this year, which was remote learning, remote working, remote living. Can you just touch on that briefly, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, just quickly. I mean, I think what we really need to acknowledge is that do-at-home work is quite unique in that it utilizes digital technology to facilitate real world experience. And I mean, that was a really um, fundamental um, starting point for our team. These instructions that students were creating often, you know, invited inward reflection or connection with the natural world, which is very much a marker of our time. But equally, um, you know, COVID has been a very isolating experience for many of us. And I think the rules around how we share and express care, compassion, empathy, build community, as you said, completely transformed overnight. So thinking about how we could build collaboration and community in a safe way was fundamental to the success of this program. And, you know, I'll, just in three quick points, the way that we achieved that was, first of all, again, you know, bringing the artist directly into the classroom. We had one student comment that she never thought she'd ever meet a real life artist. You know, that was a really transformational moment for her. Um, encouraging these students to work in collectives and to have to, to negotiate that difficult space together. And, you know, as we touched on very lightly in the beginning, these school to school partnerships, being able to facil facilitate and develop wider networks um, between schools across New South Wales was, um, you know, was a wonderful takeaway. So some of the points you're touching on, um, I think start to answer this question already, but just, you know, obviously the, the act of publishing this this ebook gives you an opportunity to be really reflective and and think about some of the outcomes maybe if you could just touch on some of those other kind of key outcomes and challenges um, in devising and actually delivering this this program um, for both you and, and Antonia yeah, sure. um, well I think for me it's really emphasized more than anything and we've already delved right into this but just the importance of connecting schools with artists and with the wider arts community because you know, it became quickly apparent to me that the idea of the artist is still shrouded in some mystique. And I think if we can demystify that, um, it, it somehow adds more value rather than less. I don't think it devalues the artist. I think it adds more value because it shows these students that it's a real, it's a viable career pathway. It's a job, it's an essential service. Let's mm -hmm. be frank. I think the challenge to that is just how, how you do that, how you bring the artist in without undermining the role and the expertise of the teacher, um, who, you know, more often than not creative practitioners in their own right. But I think there's always going to be value in connecting schools with a diversity of voices from across the art, the arts community and um, a diverse way of, diverse ways of working and diverse approaches. There's always value in that. Yeah, I mean, just to further build on what Antonia was saying, I think, you know, another key uh, learning for us was how significant it is to build a, a safe space where students can give and receive feedback. And this is something that we have now sort of taken into our programming for next year. But feedback, direct feedback on student instructions from the artists 
was a real um, you know, pivotal moment in, in the Do It Homework program. And it also provided a really fundamental insight for the students into the realities of working beyond the schoolyard that, you know, as professionals, we learn that editing and revision is really fundamental to, you know, developing our self-practice. Um, but within school, you often, you know, create a project, submit it, get a grade, and then abandon it. So that was quite tough for students. But on, upon reflection, I think they really could see the value in it. Um, and furthermore, I mean, it's a bit of a sidestep, but just thinking through the digital format, two things we noticed was that time functions very differently and that um, facilitating or sustaining dialogue functions differently. So with, you know, in reference to this idea of time, Zoom gives us the, this idea that we can teleport ourselves immediately anywhere in the world and we can have that immediate connection. However, what we learned was that you can plant an idea, but it often takes a lot longer to sort of distill or resonate with the learner. And so time sort of occupies more space in the digital digital programming world and equally because it's a lot harder to sustain a conversation with learners when there's 26 in class mm -hmm. it it appeared far more effective for us to you know provide you know provide an exercise kind of give an overview of how you may tackle it and then learn about the learning journey through the artwork itself and so in many ways we kind of transcended language and we were able to connect purely with the visual which was such a beautiful experience yeah, I think it will be great to hear about some of those challenges from uh, from Heather a little bit later. Um, before we before we jump uh, to to Dale, I have a question specifically about artists and you know my own interest as a as a curator. Something that you know I think this project really uh, was reliant upon the the generosity of artists, of artists' time, of artists' ideas, um, and and artists having a genuine interest in in learning and dialogue with young people. Obviously, Dale joins us tonight, and and Lauren and Amrita, you know, also were participants, but all of whom you know, they have really diverse arts practices. So I'd love you to talk, Antonia, just briefly about the the selection of of artists and how you work with these artists over this long period of time. As Antonia, as as Leah, you just mentioned, it's not it wasn't a matter of creating instruction and kind of walking away. This is an an in depth program where artists are, you know, working very closely with you know these different. Um, you know, participants in, in this kind of model. So yeah, your comments on that, Antonia. Sure. I will be uh, brief because I'm just mindful of time, but um, you know, I know we keep coming back to this word diversity. But that was honestly the kind of initial driving force was how to get a diverse, you know, uh, represent a diversity of different artists, backgrounds, different ways of working. Um, obviously, the time frame was ridiculously compressed. There were, was no luxury of, you know, going on leisurely studio visits or mm. um, having long cups of coffee with um, artists as we may normally like to do. Um, but we did have the benefit of having these 18, you know, it was almost like a smorgasbord of 18 amazing artists to choose from. And we also had the instructions that they'd already written which kind of gave us all, you know, more insight than we could have hoped for, I think, into how they might approach this project. So um, Amrita and Lauren, we were a little bit more familiar with their practices. Dale was a, a lovely surprise, but I think there was something in his original um, instruction for Project 36 that just spoke to us and we felt would, you know, that it could really resonate with young people and, and help them in some ways hone their focus on their immediate environment, but also to see it in a kind of global context. and. Um, that might seem a little abstract if you're not familiar with Dale's instruction, but I urge you to check it out um, on the Project 36 website or catalogue if you haven't already. But um, I might just hand over to Dale now. I think that's a good segue. <laughs> I think that's a great segue. I mean, as, as you mentioned, Dale created a beautiful instruction for, for Do It Australia, and it really did see some of the more considered responses and detailed responses. Um, but then, Dale, you were forced with this new proposition to create an instruction specifically for, for a targeted audience, a very different audience. And I'd love to hear how you approach that. From the outside, I was like, well, what do you mean? All these instructions can be done by students. You know, we, why, why try something different? Like, do you have any thoughts on that? And how, how, how did you approach it differently? Did you at all? Yeah. Um, I just check what, what screen it goes to. but. Um... So initially I talked with Antonia about, um, about rules as one of the things that came up and she, she caused me to remember that just before that 
students are often in a framework of directive or being told what to do. And Leah also touched on there about um, what, a what a student's really invested in, what's important to them and what do they want mm -hmm. uh, to put their time to. So this was something that I've, I've experienced in working with young people in the past is that uh, um, encouraging young folks to hold their own space and, and to be presenting themselves in what's important to them was something that I could draw upon. And uh, so I did approach it through those lenses more than a, than a broad uh, invitation to, to, to join a practice, uh, really looking, honing in on, on what I'd uh, already experienced with young folks and how they might receive it and be encouraged to join in fully. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that I was really, um, well, it's something I really enjoyed about your practice from our early conversations was just hearing through the development of your own work, your own interest in, in uh, the teaching and kind of guiding potential of your work. Um, I'd love to hear more about the experience of, of working with young people and how that enriches your practice. Obviously, it's a choice to really be actively in, you know, engaged in, in these conversations and the kind of value that you can get from different perspectives and young people's perspectives. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And particularly young people's perspectives, uh, what they're living among and their, their view on the world that we're living with them often astounds me and I'm, I'm enthused by it and I love hearing their theories and hearing what is it um, you know what's what's got them ticking so yeah that's that's certainly the way I've, I've um, been interested to, to go about it yeah something that keeps on coming up when you're when you know, in our preparatory kind of talks and things that Leah and Antonia have said was your kind of when you just Kind of touched on it you're taking the time to understand the students context and where they're coming from and obviously there's still um you know there's always kind of an element of surprise in the classroom but i think that was a, a key takeaway for us as an organization just making sure that we're you know providing enough and i think it's something that you know going forward we'll be really kind of conscious of making sure that there's understanding on both sides, you know, because you're coming into student space, which is, um, you know, another another point that I'm going to get to in the moment. But first, Leah touched on this idea of or this part of the program where you're talking about feedback. You're talking about the value of feedback as an artist from mentors, from artists. Um, we had one student uh, I heard who asked, when do you know that something is done? And I really loved that question. Um, I'd love you to talk about, I guess, how you value feedback and how you convey that to students. You gave feedback to, to students as they were creating their own artworks, their own instructions, which was hugely, hugely valuable. Um, I'd like to hear about that experience. Sure. Uh, well, feedbacks, you know, from art college days, feedback has been something that's really helpful. And one of the things that often helps that to be even more uh, beneficial is context you know the context of an artwork or why it exists or who you are or, or where it's come from this kind of stuff so for me feedback's been continues to be really important um, not always bound to the context or the original intention for the work but uh, having that context be accessible to others helps the feedback to be to be met in a, in a, in a better exchange and certainly that was something I, I witnessed in the young young people that uh, presenting their own instruction uh, serves one purpose in helping them to to be you know, presenting their work and to be seen but also I learned through the process that actually I, I really benefit a lot from the context of the student and their immediate classroom and in the school where they're in so uh, this this is something I took away from the project learning that feedback for me is often grounded in the context of, of the exchange or the why or the how and that actually is really important for the students maybe to have that opportunity as well just to tell us about who they are and what, what's the point of their work? What's the point? Why does it exist and who are you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's, I guess what we're talking about, that context is really important. Obviously you were an artist in a school situation. You weren't in your studio, you weren't in an arts institution. Um, do you think that the, the conversation changes because you're, I know we're, we're remote, we're via Zoom, but you know, we're still seeing students in, in via Zoom in their classroom or they're at home. How did that change the dynamic of the conversation? Yeah, yeah. I think the the being visible on this on the camera here on the screen shifts things, shifts things for adults, but probably I, I witnessed it for the young young folks as well, seeing themselves has another level of, uh, of experience for them. Uh, zooming in was, was really wonderful because I got to see them in their space, but also share a bit of my space as well. Mm. So we have a pan around at times. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess one of the, the key ones is sometimes in, in person and in space, you can settle into that 
that, uh, that groove together or, or seek to find where the students are at to, to meet them in that. And uh, I think we're all actively working in the, in the Zoom scenario. And I guess that comes back to context, but swinging it back to the instructions, I guess that's also where the instructions come in is offering something of yourself and asking someone else to meet that with themselves and, and participate. Yeah, that was something I loved about your instruction and the way you really gently brought it into the everyday ritual. It's something that you, you, you start your day that way and right. bringing that, that level of awareness. I think it was just, it was something I think students needed and really focusing on self and, okay, who am I? What do I, you know, what do I bring? What can I can contribute? Um, I think that was a real strength of, of that instruction. Um, I want to pivot at this point to, to Heather because we're talking about the experience of being in the classroom and I'm sure, I mean, just um, to, to explain the, the program, different artists were partnered up with different schools. You and Heather weren't partnered up, but we, I think we're keen to still hear about some of those shared experiences. Um, I'm gonna jump to Heather now just to get the teacher's perspective on um, why it is important for, for artists to visit young people in, in their space, their virtual classrooms. Um, I think when students get to have that experience of having people come into their space, um, it's a really validating um, opportunity for them. They, it, rather than sort of having to take themselves out of, you know, their home, their community that they turn up to every day and, and visit somewhere else, which is also a really important um, experience, I think, to say to students, you know, that, that you belong in these other spaces, but to have people invited into their space into where they make their own work, what is essentially their studio, although it's a classroom. Um, I, think, I think that really, they find that very encouraging and it is an exciting thing for them because it means that the work that they do is being seen by somebody outside of their normal community, their teachers or their peers in their classroom. And that is validating. And I think, you know, also building those connections with people, you know, who um, are working professionally in the industry and, and seeing that connection in their own space, I think is a really important way for building those bridges for students between their learning experience and that their experience at school and their potential experiences then once they you know, graduate or think about whether they're going to pursue you know, the arts as a career, it, it, it opens up those pathways for them you know, in a really, um, I guess, accessible. It's, it's there, it's, you know, um, and they feel that they're able to sort of you know, open that door and walk through that door with somebody else as well. Yeah, well, I guess we're talking about different different kinds of skills, and um, obviously this is a, a, a very difficult concept as well. I think Antonia and Lee were touching on that. It, you know, it's a challenging concept to, to start with, but I think at the same time, the open endedness of the format really naturally lends itself to a learning environment. School is a place of rules. It's a place of breaking rules, and I think it would be nice to hear about how this particular project not only extended students' knowledge of and kind of um, about the arts community, but how it might also develop skills like well-being or, or help with well-being or self-confidence or, or agency. Um, yeah, well, I think just the the um, collaborative nature of the project, um, you know, students working in small groups and having to navigate and negotiate within their groups, um, the work that they wanted to create and how they were interpreting other people's work as well. Um, but that's a really important skill, I think, as a practitioner to have. Like, so often we're not working, you know, in that sort of isolation and, and to be able to, you know, navigate a, a, a creative process and, and make compromises and make decisions together. Um, I think that's a really fundamental skill that students can develop um, from a wellbeing perspective, just, you know, the, the deeper relationships that students then develop with their peers and within that, you know, school context, I think is really important. Um, it, it provides them sort of with a, you know, a, a wider network, I guess, of support and, and people, you know, allows them to develop those deeper relationships with people who, you know, think the same way as they do are interested in the same things as they are but are passionate you know about those things that they're also passionate about which you know bringing back the idea of having the artist or people you know like the arts education team within our school environment is an extension of that as well it helps place students in that sort of notion that they, they belong to a bigger community they're not just you know isolated in their school they're you know um so that it's it's but i think it's a really positive experience in that respect Hmm. Well, I, it's great to hear about the student experience. I was also interested in the teacher's experience. I think preparing for this conversation, you had some really lovely insights 
as a visual arts teacher about how you fit into the broader arts community. And I know there were a number of teachers who actually created and responded to instructions, um, which was not required, but really welcome. I'd love you to talk about the, the personal experience for you uh, as a teacher, as a visual arts teacher. Oh, I really enjoyed working in the project myself. So with my students, I, I also sat down and responded to some of the um, instructions, some of the instructions that were part of the Do It project that were written by our artists, but also some of the instructions that came from our partner school. Um, you know, I, and I, yeah, for me, I think as a teacher, sometimes it's really hard to maintain that artistic practice that you had at some point that led you into becoming an arts educator to find the space to to create and mm -hmm. this do it project for me was a really great opportunity just to you know give me permission to take some time out of my teaching practice and actually make some art as well and to have that opportunity to do that you know alongside my students to to sort of model that for them but also for them and I to have that feeling that we were working through the project together, I think was a really, you know, positive um, experience as well. Like we had a lot of really interesting conversations about how we were going to, you know, how you would go about interpreting the work or looking at the different ways that they interpreted works, which were often really surprising and, and you know, not at all what I was expecting, but, you know, were wonderful surprises. As well. yeah, I think that's the best part of this, this program is that, you know, it really, in doing any instruction, you, you are proving that every every interpretation is valid so I think it's a really nice tool for being really playful in the classroom I think as as Leah touched on um we've we've kind of skirted a little bit around the the conversation of talking of uh, running these programs digitally uh, obviously you know you weren't just running arts projects uh on on zoom it was everything on zoom I'd love you to talk about the experience of remote learning generally but um, you know, the benefits, the, the challenges, uh, this is all really useful for us as, a, as an arts organisation thinking about into the future, how, how we might deliver these programs, even when we can get back into the classrooms, um, you know, your insights are, are really valuable. Yeah, so I mean, digital learning and remote learning um, was a challenging experience. So it's, it's um, for everyone, I think, involved, students and, and teachers, I think the hardest part for me is not necessarily de delivering information or but maintaining and building relationships with students because it's you know those positive relationships that I think are you know that's the sort of the key to um, being able to engage students with their learning um, and obviously visual arts is a bit hard to do some of our stuff digitally like we had to really you know pivot the way that we were thinking about how you get students to make art and how you create art and then how you share that back when students are all working in different spaces and trying to work through a digital platform. So something like the the Do It Homework project was, it was almost perfectly suited to that digital experience. Students could work independently, but they could document their work and share it back, um, you know, and they could work collaboratively um, through, you know, either using platforms like Google Documents or, you know, their, their Google Classrooms, but also, you know, throughout that project, we moved from a model of completely learning at home to being back mm -hmm. at school. And, and it, it had enough flexibility that at every point in that experience, we were able to sort of tweak what was happening and, and, and work within those different parameters. And, you know, Leah and Antonio were great as well in that respect, that they were really flexible and, and you know, always willing to sort of meet with us part way in terms of how we were delivering that work and what that looked like for students. Um, one of my, you know, the most surprising things was, you know, a couple of times we had meetings lined up with our students and students who happened to be away sick at home, logged in from home and I wasn't expecting that, but to me that was a really great, you know, testament to how engaged the kids were with the work and how much they were enjoying it as well. Yeah, that's a really positive sign. I um I wanted to come back to a point, Antonia, you mentioned, I think, about having both a, an artist and a teacher in the classroom. But Dale, did you have any comments, I, you know, about striking that balance between being teacher, being artist, with a teacher in the space? Like how how does that work? Is that smooth sailing? Is that, you know, a lot of listening or can you can you know that's really for both of you actually um it's a new experience in some ways it's certainly not the first time it's been done we're you know working off you know and looking to really successful programs but um always good to to hear about the experience of it from your perspective well switching different modes between artist and teacher um projecting outwards to the to the students that to listen and to hear them and to try to meet them in their work and what they're motivated by but also then 
uh, switching back into into uh, in, 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 into the personal space. Um, I did particularly enjoy being able to demystify some of these processes, and so that was one of the, one of the good ones. There is, uh, um, yeah, demonstrating that uh, these kind of nervousnesses or, or listening or or uh, the timing is in your own space to uh, to consider what you're motivated by. That was um, really great to be able to demonstrate to, to student artists that this is something that's shared as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that what you touched upon, that notion of demystifying the role of an artist is really important. So often students, you know, particularly in an educational setting, we're learning about artists and, you know, sometimes they're contemporary artists who are part of our community, but oftentimes they're historical, you know, artists that we're all very much in awe of. And to, to actually be able to connect students with, with artists who are currently working, it, it takes away that sort of, you know, notion of the... Yeah, artist as being something other than they are or something you know that they couldn't possibly become and it, it makes it be you know an attainable and, and um, viable kind of path for them. Could I, if I could jump back in there Heather that's precisely where the motivation for my instruction comes from is that um, if we're looking at Indigenous communities in, in cultural revival and restoration and, and con continuation I was interested in um, the distinction that often gets set up between an artist and your cultural self, who you might be when you're having breakfast or who you might be when you come to school and this idea of being an artist and the idea of even coming to art class from say a social science class. So uh, they're all cultural formats and they're all cultural ways of being. And I, I feel like, yeah, you've described some of that. That's what, what I'm really keen to see we can, uh, we can shift around, yeah. I think uh, some, some conversations that Antonia and Leah have been touching on is moving away, you know, starting with a pilot program and then really forging ahead with it, you know, not, I think not having too many pilot programs, but actually being able to say, okay, these are our learnings, let's go again, let's see, you know, how we can really continue to, to build on this. Um, and it brings me to this point about, you know, coming back to the e, the e book, Antonia, um, we've discussed how much this year organizations are being really reflective and, um, I'd love to just as an educator hear about why it's important that you know you are creating these resources and drawing all of these learnings together, consolidating them and, and, and sharing them. Sure. Um, I think quite simply we just saw a gap, you know, they often um, we go looking for resources to guide our own planning and our own research and and we quite often can't find them. You know, we know there are institutions out there doing amazing things. Um, they certainly look amazing from the outside, but it's sometimes very hard to grasp the really fine grain detail of what has happened with whom, you know, what was the exchange that took place in the classroom? Um, you know, because these programs stay often within a museum or a gallery context, these programs are often taking place, education programs take place behind closed doors. And um, you know, often classrooms are seen as kind of a little bit divorced from the arts community or the rest of the community. And I think, mm. you know, there are probably valid reasons for that. I think when you're um, working with young people, particularly, or where you want to create a space where people feel safe and secure enough to express themselves, share their ideas, um, take risks, experiment a little, be a little bit vulnerable. So I understand there are sensitivities around that, but I think if you can kind of navigate those sensitivities and I think that's probably where working very closely with the classroom teacher it's all ally kind of comes in because they know their students and, and their needs um, I think it's really important to be able to share these processes and and you know Heather said something really lovely earlier about the classroom as a studio as an artist studio and I think that's really um, important to show that as I was saying schools are not divorced from the arts community you know schools are an integral part of the arts community. And as, as Dale was touching on as well, you know, that it's all, it's all cultural practice, it's all cultural production, you know, like cultural change happens as much around kitchen tables and classroom desks as it does around, you know, boardrooms, probably more so. Um, you know, but equally, um, I think just in the context of COVID-19, obviously we have a sense that this is not, really business as usual that this kind of is a transformative moment so you know while this program was devised very rapidly I might add as a kind of response to COVID-19 um, I think we all have the feeling that something has shifted you know it's, it's possible we may not work in exactly the same way again we may not teach and learn in exactly the same way again so um, 
I think it's quite important to reflect at this moment about, you know, what worked well, what didn't, and, and how do we move forward from this point? So I hope the ebook is a small way. <laughs> well, on, on, that, on that point, um, I guess I just wanted to, to finish with some key takeaways from everyone. I, when I think about the classroom, I think about it as a, a place for, you know, with potential for surprise and inspiration that can be found in, in the minds of young people. And I'd love to just to land, hear about some of the you know, unsuspecting kind of moments um, throughout the program. Uh, Leah, I'm gonna to throw to you first. Oh God, I've got to set the bar high. Um, I think my most beautiful takeaway was that young people really thrive in the unknown. So I think, you know, what was really surprising was how they really embraced being in this uncomfortable space. But I would argue and say that for almost every student that participated, the idea of instructions as artworks was something that they had never really contended with. And I think that, you know, the way that we sort of scaffold the program or, or um, yeah, developed it was really about, you know, and as Dale has, and, and everyone really has touched on is like starting with yourself, you know, when you have this sort of tangible um, thing that you can connect to, you feel a lot safer to sort of dive in head first. And I think, um, you know, it was all very unknown, but they were really kind of relishing in it. And it was, yeah, it was such a nice um, experience and a beautiful takeaway. Thanks. Should I go next? Sorry, I had just muted myself because it's suddenly blowing a gale outside. So apologies if there's any, um, the weather's interfering here. Um, you know, I think while I was editing the book, um, there was a word that was sort of escaping me. I was thinking, what is it? It's not really equality. It's not democracy. What is it? And then I, you know, with help of the thesaurus, I finally grasped onto it and I realized it was reciprocity. And I think that was the thing that actually leapt out to me in this program. Like we had an exchange, you know, despite the awkwardness of the Zoom format, you know, we somehow set up this exchange that was happening in all directions, you know, like students were sharing with students from other schools, artists were responding to instructions from students, teachers were writing instructions, they were responding to instructions. Mm. So it was like, there was this beautiful sort of um, sharing of ideas that was flowing in all directions. And I think that was actually um, really quite unexpected. So I think, yeah, it's just that, that idea of, ex you know, in that very simple act of exchanging instruction, there was something um, quite intimate and, and quite lovely that was generated. And I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> All right, well, I'll jump in. And I think following on from um, what Antonio was just talking about, for me, the sort of sense of community that came out of this project is I think a really strong thing. And my students, you know, have developed a whole lot of really, you know, positive relationships with people that they wouldn't necessarily have had contact with before. Um, both, you know, artists, um, education officers, students in other communities and teachers in other communities as well. And to, I think schools can be a little bit isolating. We, we can kind of little be islands sometimes of our own, you know, in our own little worlds. And so to have a program like this, which, you know, so much is about that sort of sense of communication and connection um, with, you know, the world around students and with other people, I think was a really timely um, program in the context of COVID this year. Um, and also I think, you know, there's a great sense of um, accessibility, you know, for students using the digital format that, that, that um, Leah and Antonia developed and, you know, being able to access, um, you know, opportunities from the classroom, I think is a really important thing. I, I teach in a metropolitan school now, but I've taught, you know, um, in Bar Arnold and I've taught in Burke and I grew up in Daniloquin. So I'm, you know, also quite aware of that sort of, I guess, distance you know, that 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 isolation that distance can create but the program that was developed this year really broke down those barriers in terms of you know being able to make connections with people so I think there's a real strength that could be used into the future in terms of the way that you know education programs are developed and delivered to students as well. I guess I'll jump in there is that um, Heather and Antonia have talked about uh, the roles of the, the teachers in the in the uh, in the classroom and the, the the community and the sharing and the breaking that isolation. Um, there was one particular teacher from Sydney Boys High uh, who actually took up the instruction herself and was uh, was including that 
So that I feel that's really important for students to see that their teachers, as you, you did, Heather, demonstrate your own practice and your own creative self. Uh, and artists zooming in from, from their world and, uh, and seeing other students and other artists in other classrooms. Um, that's, that's been a real highlight for me, yeah. Thanks, Dale. I think that's a really nice, a nice point to end on. Um, I think a lot of those points are really touched on in, in the ebook as well. There's, there's a lot more detail in there. It went live today. Uh, it's free. Download it now. Um, this is my pitch part as we come to the end. But we, we really do invite you to explore at home, in the classroom, uh, and make use of all the resources. So there were the, the three initial resources that were released in May when we did uh, release Do It Australia and then the, the ebook, which was released today. I'm gonna to read out the URL, which seems strange, but do it.caldorartprojects.org.au forward slash learning is where you can find all of those resources, um, but you can always be in touch uh, via social media and um, on our website. In closing, I just wanna thank our, our, our participants once again, the ever generous Dale Harding, Heather Davidson, Antonia Fredman, Leah Smith. Thank you very much all. See you soon. Teachers rock. <laughs> <laughs> Said <Is that> artists. <laughs>